Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Employment support, transport and housing, 
to have good health. So we'll need to listen and strengthen our voluntary and community sector and recognise them as the equal partners that they absolutely are. And we'll need to put the lived experience of that diverse communities are part of the way in which we work together. There are no shortage. That is right. There are no shortage of great assets and examples of good practice across South Africa, on which we can build that um, since we saw earlier this week is, is testament to that. However, there's no denying the scale of the challenge that we face. And those challenges are long standing and they are really complex. We've seen this week lots of people from across South Africa should get involved in the uh, future South African movement, which I'm grateful to Kathy for leading on. I'm going to hear more on our short aid. This has shown us what our community's hopes are for the future, but also point to those challenges that we face ahead. And as you all know, if we're going to overcome those challenges together, we must do things differently. A system wide effort that helps people in South Africa lead happier, healthier lives right from day one. That's why the Integrated Care Strategy for South Africa, that we're launching here today, will tackle head on the health inequalities in our region. And I'm pleased that here today there is a joint determination to make South Yorkshire the healthiest region. In the country, so every child born in Barnsley, Rotherham, Doncaster, and Sheffield can meet their full potential. Yeah. And that's all in the future of our nation. So, with that done, we'll all have to be very long. I don't think we're going to need to do introductions for what we all know to by now, but if you could introduce yourself, what we do is that we speak, that will help us to know. And um, you know, uh, are there any declarations of interest to be shared? In which case, we move on to the minutes of the meeting that was held on the 20th of December 2022. Any objections? Any revisions? Everybody read through the word for word and is happy with the reflection. If you can remember the 20th of December 2022. <laughs> um, in which case, moving on to item number four, please. The staff of your health and care partnership integrated care strategy presented by our own Bill Cleary. Thanks, Ali. I hope people can remember the 20th of December, yeah. three months ago, because actually that's where I was going to start. And I've promised my colleagues that I'm not going to steal their thunder, folks. Uh, helped out by uh, Mariana and Dandy and others to present today's strategy. Um, the 20th of December was quite important because actually that was a really challenging milestone for us in developing our first strategy um, because uh, the expectation or the ask on us as our, from our system, from government, from NHS England and others was to set that out. That was really important for us. Actually, we were uh, setting out as a, as a new system. But it was important for another reason, and that is so that the integrated care strategy, um, at least the shape of it, is there to be able to inform other plans. Uh, so in particular, we talked uh, then about the development of the joint forward plan, which work is underway, and many of you will be aware and in, involved of that, in that. So I think it was it was an important it was an important juncture, and we went through all of the key elements of the strategy uh, at that meeting as well. And, and I think that's important if you look back in the minutes, you can see the range of um, partners around this table who um, shared uh, and were part of sharing the sort of the core elements of the strategy. Because we all worked through it, didn't we? Uh, over a sort of quick pace of time, as Oliver said, and um, you know, I'm really grateful, Oliver, for sort of the recognition of all of us and the team for that. But, um, in essence, for me, it was actually made a bit made easier because of the engagement of this group. I was just really mindful that you know there's been significant amount of other pressures um, on us uh, in that time and still are. But the amount of commitment and energy that um, folks here in this room and outside put into that was tremendous, and that did make it easier. Uh, I have to say, um, but what we did. Uh, so we did produce the strategy, we did share it, we um, we received it here um, and it was received well uh, in terms of the core elements of that. But we did want to take some time to do some further engagement work. So from, from the 20th of December onwards um, through to where we are today, we did do we did, we did do that with with our stakeholders. We built on the what asked you campaign and the insights were we gleaned from all of our organisations that have spoken to people in the public over certainly over the last couple of years, we wanted to make sure that we captured all of that and we we, we shared that. 
in terms of I, I just pulled out from you know from my own reflections and observations and memory about why was it well received and also from the feedback and I think there were three main things that, that jumped out at me um, and that was the fact that we were building on um, what's already happening so in other words the, we're already building on the work that has gone before and the work that's continuing so building on the you know that great work and that was one of the things so that clearly came through in the strategy I think the other thing that came out as well was not only is it ambitious in the areas that it needs to be it's also got some flexibility built into that I think one of the things we discussed here this is um, you know there was a very tight a tight time scale we are a new partnership coming together and therefore just recognizing that and that's the essence of it being our, in, our initial uh, uh, integrated care strategy and therefore we wanted to have some real purpose in what we thought that we could do and achieve as a whole system and then the third area was about that so the areas of focus that um, we feel that working as a whole system together we can actually really add some value to for our population so certainly those four bold ambitions but also those joint commitments and we'll come on to those uh, in a little while um, but those four areas of focus are where we think that working together as a whole system doing not only our bit but actually working well with others is the areas where we can really add some value um, and I think that was um, reflected really positively in the feed feedback that we had as well and those joint commitments I'm not going to say much too much but I think when you look at those because they are about how we maintain and take forward our ambition but also I think Oliver you challenged this this integrated care partnership quite early on in terms of well, what's going to be different because these are not new problems <laughs> some of the things that have made it perhaps very difficult for us to make any real headway are in those in those joint commitments so whether that's about our leadership and what we do to get behind that or whether it's about really understanding what it is that we need to do to make sure that we can focus our resources whatever they are whether they're people whether they're financial whether they're other whether it's just our focus in the right place some of it is in is in those so thinking about how we get behind and take those forward is going to be be really important I just wanted to remind us as well that we did um we were asked to do some things and and I think one of the really important things for me was that whatever our integrated care strategy looked like and whatever it focused on whatever it built on it did actually take the opportunity to refresh um, the needs of our population so the work of father and our DPHs in helping us do that I think made it really strong so not only is it shaped by insights of our communities and the public and insights of all of our partners also shaped by the needs of our, our population as well and I just thought it's really really important for us to be reminded today here as we're receiving the final uh, draft of our strategy from January to March one of the things that we really wanted to do is give time for our uh, key partners and stakeholders particularly to be able to reflect on the strategy and be able to feed back on it was a really busy time and I think one of the things that um, I personally was was quite heartened by was how both individuals and groups and boards took the time to do that even though it's really busy and I got a, a, a number of um, correspondence which brought that to life in a very real way so you know knowing that the boards uh, and groups took the time to do that so I just wanted to reflect that here we also took the opportunity to um, share the strategy at the health inequalities event that was hosted in Rotherham Oliver you were in that and there was many others 150 or so stakeholders from across our system and wider uh, from all disciplines so that was a really great opportunity to get further uh, feedback and input uh, to that strategy but we also managed to do there as well so um, you'll know that we're getting some excellent insight and support through um, the mayor's office through our involvement in the Harvard Bloomberg uh, city leadership initiative what that's enabled us to do is really you know harness some expertise and some you know really fantastic tools to help us you know think about our priorities in a very different way one of the things that runs through our strategy is 
of thinking differently or actually being in a place to really want to or being open to doing things differently. And I think one of the things that we did at the Health Inequalities event was test some of those uh, tools out. So taking one of those bold ambitions and actually not just assuming that we know all the answers, but really taking the opportunity to ask ourselves, you know, what is the problem? And doing some of that problem construction, deconstruction, and also really starting to get lots of perspectives about where we can be most impactful. So in other words, being able to start to test some of that, and we we're able to do that across all four mm -hmm. bold ambitions. So, you know, bringing some of that learning into this space and also getting that, you know, the 150 folks also attended that was, was, a, was a great opportunity. We also um, had feedback from all of our uh, key stakeholders and health and wellbeing boards in that space as well. And also, uh, more recently, we've had the opportunity to share the strategy with our Health Overview and Scrutiny Committee. So I joined Health Overview and Scrutiny Committee uh, across South Yorkshire. And um, you know, I'm really pleased to say that actually it was well received um, in the context of how we produced the strategy. And we didn't claim uh, as an integrated care partnership to be able to do everything, but to try and be quite discerning about what our focus was. Um, and then finally, and I, and I will shut up, um, I just wanted to remind ourselves that we did try to give some shape to our ambition. So Barbara and colleagues really helped us pull together um, a way of doing that. So how can we as an integrated care board have some confidence that the focus that we're taking is actually going to be impactful? So that's really focusing on those core aims, but also building up some success measures behind each of those uh, those bold ambitions. I wanted to remind us of that because that work's continuing. So we said we want to be, uh, as an integrated care system, you know, we want to be uh, led by, you know, the data. You know, we want to be intelligence led and led by the data. So, you know, there is work ongoing and in the development session, Barbara will just give us a bit of a glimpse in terms of how that's evolving and developing so that when we take this work forward, we really can do that thing which we are committed to doing, which is actually trying to focus on where there's the greatest need. So some of the work that Barbara's doing is going to help us and help the, the, the groups taking forward this work really sort of um, get, get into that. So I just wanted to, to mention that. So hopefully I've not broken my promise of stealing my thunder. So um, uh, I'm going to hand over to Mariana because Mariana is going to do a couple of things which I think is really important. So <coughs> we shared a full engagement draft and now you've got the final draft. So it's just important just to help you see uh, what's different about, about this draft. So, so Mariana's going to do that, um, but also just a bit, a little bit on the next steps as well. And then Andy's going to um, present the final engagement report. Uh, and what we've, um, what's different about that as uh, a final report to this meeting. Okay. Um, so thank you for that kind of journey so far. Um, what I thought I would do is just draw your attention to what you've got in your pack, um, do a bit of a brief overview of the plan of the page, which the major changed on the feedback, and then also just talk about some of the additions, changes that we've made based on what we've heard from you and others. Um, to get to the final plans, we've got a final draft. So in your pack, you've got a final uh, kind of full initial integrated care strategy for South Yorkshire. Now, we know that it is it will evolve. So, um, you know, we, we talked about this last time, didn't we, that we see this kind of start of, of our journey with people in South Yorkshire. You've also got an executive summary and you've got an initial draft of an easy read version of the strategy. Um, and we've also shared the engagement reports that detail the findings that have informed the strategy as we've developed it. So that's what we've shared with you today. Um, what I thought it would be helpful to do, because I might have quite a lot of time in the December meeting to go through the detail of the strategy. So, so the good news, I'm not going to do that again. Um, but what I thought would be helpful to do is just give you a bit of an overview of the plan on the page, because based on all the feedback that we've received, this has remained unchanged. So I thought it would be great to just spend a few moments just going through that. So, we took some time, didn't we, as members to review all of the visions that were across our health and wellbeing strategies, and we formulated a working vision for our initial strategy. So that's up there in terms of everyone in our diverse communities lives a happy, healthier life for longer. 
and we've underpinned that with a number of goals, not only around uh, living a healthier life for longer, but fairer outcomes for all. So really thinking about how we address inequalities. And then the other outcome there that's really key is about how we address um, access and quality um, to health care and um, support and services. And that was really one of the absolute key themes that came through our engagement work. Uh, in terms of our shared outcomes there, those read across really well with respect to how they are described in our health and wellbeing strategies. So starting with the best start in life for children and young people, thinking about how we support people to live healthier and longer lives, particularly those in greatest need. So how do we make the most difference there? Uh, enabling people to live in safe, strong and vibrant communities. So how do we create the uh, environment, the conditions that enables us to create health? Thinking about how we enable people to have the skills, resources and expertise. So we're thinking about you know, the knowledge, the confidence, skills to be able to support um, and, and their own health and well-being and that of their families. If you'd like to move to the next slide, please, Bags. Thank you. And then these were the areas where we really felt like there was an opportunity for us to make a bigger difference together. So our bold ambitions, the initial one being about our focus on early years, um, development in children, particularly enabling children in South Yorkshire to be school ready. And in there, that was about all children, but it was also about knowing that we have a gap between those children that are on free school meals and all children. So how do we address that gap, that kind of inequality there? The next one was about acting differently together. So really thinking about how we strengthen and accelerate our uh, focus around prevention uh, and early identification. And in there, I think if you remember back from to December, um, we talked a lot about really acknowledging the importance of those wider determinants. But we also talked about focusing on the modifiable risk factors, particularly thinking about smoking. So smoking was an initial area of attention that we identified in there. The next bold ambition was thinking about how we work together to increase economic participation and support the development of a fair, inclusive, sustainable economy. And so that was us thinking about for everyone, but it was also us thinking about those people that we know are furthest away from the labour market, um, thinking about people with physical, uh, mental health, long-term conditions, people living with uh, physical disabilities, learning disabilities. How do we support those uh, in terms of pathways into work or with a meaningful activities and we also identified in there the kind of um, our care leavers how do we think about how we work together best to support our care leavers and those pathways into um, good work the other area that we identified as a bold ambition was around our workforce so thinking about together how do we collaborate to support our entire workforce health and care and within there thinking about voluntary community social enterprise sector thinking about carers paid and unpaid and really within that we were thinking about the development of our workforce strategy we were thinking about how do we support the development of a workforce that's more diverse that really uh, represents the communities we serve and then how do we work towards becoming um, an anti-racist system so there were some specific deliverables that underpinned that bold ambition the um, Next following um, stripe on the slide there is around our joint commitments. So these were the things that we spent some time on as a partnership to think about what commitments do we wish to make together that we know will help us in terms of enabling the delivery of the strategy. And so in there, we identified the importance of bold, visible and collaborative leadership, identifying, recognising and tackling systemic discrimination. And we met that in its broadest sense, but also with a focus on um, anti-racism. Looking at how we work together to uh, think about how we uh, reallocate resources towards those with greatest need. And we were thinking about that towards more preventative approaches, as well as towards our kind of communities, which we know where we've got greater needs. Continuing on our journey to support joined up service delivery, so that journey that we're on with respect to integration, listening and co-producing with people and communities and continuing our journey around engagement and involvement and in how we start to translate this, this strategy into delivery, how to do that um, in a way that enables co-production with people and communities. And then finally, thinking about how we work towards the development of a culture which supports learning and innovation. And in there, we were thinking about sharing best practice, how we would enable adoption of proven innovation, but also how we've worked with wider partners in terms of strengthening our kind of research and innovation <coughs> opportunities. Do the next slide for me. 
I thought what I would do briefly is just draw your attention to some of the things that we have updated, changed, added in this kind of next draft of the strategy. So we've really increased the recognition in the strategy of the challenging context that our health and care services are operating in. Uh, and of course, the environment within which we've developed the strategy as well. Um, we have increased references around our health and care assets in South Yorkshire, so some of the kind of specialist services that we have, some of the new developments that we have to the National Centre for Children Health Technology. Um, we have um, strengthened the reference throughout physical activity. Um, we've included commercial determinants of health, which I think is something we talked about last time we came together. And that was about ensuring that we acknowledge the impact of harmful product industries. Um, and so we've added more detail into the next draft of the strategy around that. We have strengthened our references with respect to public transport. So we've made a reference across to the South Yorkshire Transport Strategy, acknowledging the importance of affordable transport. And we've looked at how we can further align the opportunities with respect to enabling active travel. The other area that we've strengthened is referencing our kind of existing housing stock. So conscious of, you know, some of the challenges around um, old, damp, et cetera, at the moment. So we've, we've strengthened the references there. And then the, the, the other key point that I wanted to make really was listening to um, those of you that were um, keen that we ensured that we really strengthened our focus around access and quality, given that that was what people had identified really mattered to them. Um, and one of the things that we're looking to do is ensure that that really is a key focus in our delivery plans, um, particularly the work that we're planning at the moment with respect to the NHS joint forward plan. Thank you. So what I thought I would do is just give, to give a little bit of a flavour of some of the next steps that we're starting to take. Um, so we're, we made a commitment with respect to ongoing engagement. And so we are continuing on that journey to continue the conversation. Um, and some of that will also inform the development of our joint forward plan. And Andy's going to share a little bit more detail about the work that we're doing with Health Watch colleagues and the kind of ongoing campaign that we've got there. Um, we've also um, made progress to start to develop our NHS joint forward plan. And so that's one of the kind of potential key delivery vehicles for our integrating care strategy, particularly where we'll be looking to set out what the kind of NHS contribution is towards delivery. That was all that I was going to say with respect to some of the changes in the strategy and where we've got to. So if it's OK, I'd ask Andy to just share a little bit more about the ongoing engagement. I thought that would probably be of interest to everybody. Thank you. Um, so, so the, the engagement report, which is in the pack, um, includes all the changes that we talked about at the last meeting so that, that the partnership can receive those formally. And it does include the word cloud that, that we discussed, which picks out the keywords from the engagement report. So you can see that. But I really wanted to touch on what the um, what the future looks like now. So, so as Mariana alluded to, we are now moving into a phase of engagement on the the joint forward plan. So we're really grateful to colleagues from Health Watch who are supporting us because clearly they were able to um, to offer some um, critical advice about how we approach the engagement um, of the strategy itself um, and have agreed to work with us on uh, on the future engagement. So. Um, so our thanks, thanks to the four health watches for that. It's really a three pronged approach. So health watches is, is a part of that. Working with our programmes uh, who who can tap into our citizens and their views around that. And again, having an online platform for people to be able to share their views. Um, if you just touch on the next slide, please. So, so health watch are really supporting us to uh, to reach those uh, underserved communities. So, so we kind of tried to map where we've got really good existing relationships, where we can cap, where we think we can we can um, have those conversations, and where we might potentially struggle, um, and and then how we can we can mitigate those. So so this is kind of a, a live iteration of where we are at the moment, and we we'll continue to work, work through it. But as you can see, there are there are areas where we will need to work quite hard to try and reach those communities themselves. Um, next slide, please. And then again, we, we really want to reach those communities that are the most deprived in, in South Yorkshire. And again, Health Watch are supporting us to um, to identify which communities they are and, and how we can reach into them. So so there's kind of a high level overlook of, um, of, of which communities we might reach as part of that. Um, and like I say, Health Watch has been really helpful in, uh, in helping us to build that. So so really for, for engagement as a whole, um, 
we recognise that a piece of work was done in, in November and early December, and, and obviously we've talked about the limitations it had on it previously. Um, and again, now we're trying to build on that work with the support of partners um, to really reach a different audience and probably a larger audience at the same time. Thank you very much. Anybody have any comments or questions? Um, I would suggest saying that Councillor Rachel Blair is down to help along. Really good to see the, the progress in terms of engagement. And I'm just thinking, given that we're an ambitious partnership, how far we intend to go in terms of that matter's involvement. So at the moment, it appears quite communicating. Um, and I would think as a partnership, we want to get to the point where patient experience holds us to be you know, holding us to account. Um, and then I know citizens' voice within there. I just would like to see some real ambition in terms of where we get to that point in terms of co-production, accountability, in, in a way, because we should be answerable to the public, shouldn't we? Not the other way around. Yeah, I mean, I, I would absolutely agree. Um, and I think this is the very, very start of the journey. Um, so the, the engagement we did with the strategy at the very beginning, it certainly doesn't stop. And now we, we do try to embed that and build it into everything mm -hmm. we do. So for us as NHS South Yorkshire being a relatively new organisation, we're not starting from day one because we've really four organisations before. But, but this is very much the start of ramping up how much engagement we do and how we build that into our plan. So, I would completely agree with you. Yeah, just just to I uh, suppose just to follow up with what Rachel said. Uh, sorry, Councillor Andrew Ball, uh, Doncaster. Uh, we we know that the the engagement that took part during the actual strategy, uh, the numbers of responses uh, needed to be massively improved uh, in terms of what we had there. Um, and I, I noticed if you could just go back to your second slide, this would be really useful. You mentioned something, but then you moved on in terms of citizen involvement panels. Is that right? Uh, yes, I think, I think so. If you... yeah. and, and from my perspective, I mean, I think that that, that that links in very well with what Rachel said in terms of obviously getting, getting uh, you know, the, the population of South Yorkshire and certainly in our, in our most deprived areas engaged in that process rather than the process being done to them it's done with them and they're involved in that, they can actually provide feedback. Because at this moment, as you're aware, engagement is extremely limited. So I see that very much as a way forward. Great, and then Helen on screen, please. Thanks, all right. So Greg Helms, Rex Public Health, Sheffield, uh, broader than engagement, just three foot one content for physical so congrats. It seems to come on, it started great, it's come on really well. So congrats. These are sort of going forward for us. Um, something about really going to town on the principles that have been in all equity, and of course, these things you start better, social justice, health as a right, and conditions that create health as a, as a right for humans, etc. So the fundamental principles about the territory. Second, I was struck by framing. Oliver, you said something about the three, well, I forget the number, 3.6 billion that's the healthcare system, and then the, uh, the, the 16 billion that's public health. In my head, and uh, I'm thinking aloud here, the health system is the sum total of our community and the voluntary sector and governments of various levels of geography and the NHS and nail that as the health system. I think all of that needs to contribute to this. Um, and it could quite be like that. So just exactly going forward for third thought, last thought for me is thank you for the note on Commission of Terminals of Health. The week that the house sized advert for KFC was for <laughs> <laughs> be prepared for the sort of the, the pushback that you're going to get from different bits of our local authorities that don't quite see that actually. I mean, I'm getting a lot of it at the moment. People want to see, want to be selling cigarettes and vape to kids at tram lines and I'm not very, very happy about it. So and secondly pushback from harmful product industries themselves. They will fight mm -hmm. if we can get We've got to kind of be prepared for that. They'll fight tooth and nail. On that point is there at least recently Hello. 
Uh, sorry, the, the sound's really bad, so I'm, I might repeat stuff that, that Greg and others have said, but just a, a couple of points for me, and they're, they're more sort of like pragmatic, really. In terms of the um, the kind of the way that we engage and we connect, we've got a lot of really good innovative stuff that's happening in Sheffield and other parts of the footprint. Um, so we've got the collaborative conversations work that in Sheffield across the whole set of partners, we're supporting that work in um, in line with the city goals, and it's it's actually really getting to you know people who don't normally connect with um, engagements, consultations. So I think we've got stuff that we can draw in as well as the amazing work that Healthwatch do. Um, looking at the, the list of areas and groups of people that we really are concerned about and want to connect with, um, those conversations about what matters to people in terms of the health and well-being, they're already taking place. There are a huge number of um, voluntary and community organisations that are working with people and are having those conversations and, and know what that looks like. We could maybe use that in a, in a much more productive way. And I think Greg made the point about a partnership and a partnership approach. It's not the health system plus some other partners. Actually, the VCS are more than an organized set of organizations that can um, do delivery and help prop up the workforce force there is actually a lot of expertise and insight and we can use that in in a way that really does help with that connectivity understanding but also solving some of the problems so i'd like to kind of pitch that in terms of how we frame this and how we set some of the principles of how we work on that next stage of developing a long-term plan you're welcome uh, thank you and uh, Dolly, did you? Oh, okay. Oh, wait. <laughs> okay. Dolly, do you want to come in? Yes, yeah. Hi, I'm, I'm John Brenner. I'm covering for Chapel, so you're uh, an unsocial care person in the room. Um, I think it's strategy great. It's, it's um, yeah, really good articulation. I think there's a specific point I want to make about workforce and social care. Um, I'm sorry, that's a little parochial as a social care person. But the, um, you know, of that 72,000, there's going to be somewhere between a third and a half of those in social care workforce. We know there is significant underestimated um, underinvestment, not just in the pay rates, but actually in development and around workforce development. I don't see that teased out in this strategy and actually some of the other things sufficiently. Now, I realise there's something around ICD responsibility versus local authority or responsibility and skills for care, etc. But it feels like there is a little bit of a, of a gap if we want our, you know, if we, if we to, I think, I think to achieve the ambitions that set out the strategy very well, it feels like a, a gap in acknowledgement of that specific bit about that workforce. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to back up that specific part. I think it's a really brilliant point, actually, John. Um, uh, because uh, whichever way you look at that, it's, it's, it's a winning point, isn't it? It just feeds off each other. So actually good quality employment in the sector of health and care, which will continue to grow over the coming years, seems to make absolute sense and ties incredibly well in uh, with, uh, with the ambitions of when you look at the the scale of the health and care economy as part of South Yorkshire's economy is about 12 percent something like that so, so as a growth sector it should be but actually in terms of meeting some of the needs around access and quality unless we actually address the issues of workforce myself and Christine have been having this conversation trying to tie it back into something very tangible unless we grow that in terms of good employment and develop career structures and more integrated models which is about the workforce of tomorrow rather than having the workforce of today, which you and I both know about is just like, I'm asking the adult social care service and uh, I was carrying 25% vacancies and every every mm -hmm. Christmas my workforce disappeared to all of mm -hmm. the pound an hour more, you know, so that space, so it just synergizes incredible. And I just sort of wonder if we should sort of strengthen yeah. that point. Yeah. I think that there's something about, sorry, to yeah. There's, some, there's something about, um, I mean, we're talking about 50% type turnover in this workforce, so actually how do you link that to continuity of care around more relationship based around um, um, health and care system around how you um, build multidisciplinary teams that, that really know each other and, you know, it, it's really fundamental to achieving all the aims in here. Dolly, there are now two on screen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's there. Do you want to come in? Oh, you're on mute. You're on mute. Thank you so much. It looks like my cameras are just misbehaving. So I had to log on 
Um, basically, on the backdrop of what everyone had said, I just wanted to mention, I know um, Councillor Richard Brick and Ellie mentioned it earlier, and so I was trying to um, just speak on some of the points about the um, marginalised or um, the communities we are trying to reach. I know from the um, from the presentation. Um, it looks like um, I know there's a lot of work that's gone on, but my major thing is about um, for the looking into how we can involve um, this. I know the organizations working, the statutory organizations working have done so much work. And if I can um, use Doncaster as an example, we're trying to engage and use the people with lived experiences. So it would be good because strategies like these, especially if it's gone on, one of the things we'll find out after it is what has worked, what has not worked. So drawing from what has not worked from the past um, to try and mirror things down, how we can get users, especially our communities, to be involved in deliver uh, deliverables, not only the organizations, um, the organization, we work with them, we get intelligence, we feedback, but what we continue to get over the years is that this doesn't filter to just normal uh, Mr. Joe Block on the, on the road and you, you come to these communities and you ask, most of them don't read things online, they are too preoccupied with their issues of life that they don't, they don't have time, some, some are not um, kind of um, um, it's illiterate, some don't even have facilities, some don't really care, they just want to get on with their lives. So if we set up like the groups that we're using already, um, Good Work, Health Work has, has done and other communities and um, have done so far. So if we look at the kind of try to harness on the work that they have done and get the communities themselves, the people, the individual to find out to lead on these things because they know they need more. And that I think the engagement strategies to advance this is one of the things that I'm particular that we have to um, work on more so that it filters down to everyone so that years to come, everyone knows what we are trying to achieve and what we have done, not what us organized. Because at the end of the day, most of them, that's why we say they had to reach or they're marginalized. We've used those, those words. They're willing to connect as well but they don't know the know-how. So, and they feel that um, they've been let down by strategic organizations. Most of the time, they think we're using them for strategies and then they're no longer interested, but this is a genuine plan and, and to filter and for the people to be able to engage. I know that this is about them. I think we have to find out about some strategies that's going to work and kind of leverage on things that have been done before and look at other areas where we can improve and implement. Thank you. The first bit of your question, I think we just might have lost a little bit. The sound wasn't brilliant, but I think we got the second bit. And I'd say there's there's a there's a bit of the paper coming later around attacking racism, which I think touches on some of the challenges that you've outlined. I also just would say your comment that you made uh, a few months ago in one of these meetings around there being no such thing as hard to reach communities, just mm -hmm. communities we find hard to reach. I had repeated on yeah. several occasions yeah. for the citizen. Mm -hmm. I think that is absolutely, absolutely. Um, appropriate and, and apposite to that part of the conversation. So yeah. if anybody wants to come back on anything Dolly said, other than just to kind of acknowledge that, that is a really important point and, and, and absolutely right. Thank well, you. And I'm conscious of time, and I know there's other people now starting to indicate. Can I just take Fran and Kathy, and then I think we're probably just unless anyone's got a real burning desire, I think we'll probably move on to the next question. Fran, how much Fran has that? One of the things that we're getting from the groups that we're speaking to is, go on, why should we speak to you? What difference it is? We have made the commitment, so I'm going to pass this on to everybody here, that we will keep them informed of what they're saying. What difference is happening in what's that? They want us to go back in six months. People that we're speaking to and to tell them what's happening. If we can guarantee that promise, they'll continue talking to us. And that's not just one group, that's all of them. We've got five or six different groups already. <coughs> and that theme is every time. We've made that promise as health watch. And please, can you help me keep it? Yes. <laughs> it's a good challenge, I think. Yeah, it's a fair challenge. Completely. Frank, completely. And please hold that piece of the mic. Genuinely. Yeah, genuinely. And he knows I will. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not yeah, sorry. I get it. I'm not going to tell you. Yeah, please do, Cathy. Um, my point links, in a way, and bails on what Fran has just said. 
it was called an initial strategy for a reason. And we undertook to review the strategy um, on a regular basis. But I, I, we don't need to work this out now, but what are our thoughts on how we review the strategy? Um, how often will we do that? And then also how will we communicate back with our communities, how our thinking and our strategy has changed? So that might be something we don't have to answer that yeah. today, but I think we need to know that by the next meeting. Yeah, do colleagues have any thoughts? Can I just come back on one? Because I think I think it's an important point, and there are there are probably two broad reasons why we would come back. First of all, if actually our populations told us that we needed to, but I think there is something that is actually set out for us because we can review this strategy at any time. And one of the things that drives that is whether our population health needs have changed. I, I didn't say that, Greg. Probably remind me of that. And the impact of that big burger kicks in. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, to the last point then. I think. Yeah, just on that point to say, you know, that's why we designed the outcomes framework. It's to help mm -hmm. us monitor our progress and where things aren't going in the direction that we want that might require a shift. So. Well, that's, that's well, it's it's a, I think also, you know, that's a bit data, but I think we should also change it if people tell us it's not working for them as well. You know, coming back to Fran's point. I think Kathy and Andy are going to take this one. Oh, sorry, it's yeah. <coughs> Pull up the slides. But I won't take too long, Chair, but just to, just to run through what we've done this week. Um, the next slide, please. So, Really, really quick slide, just to give the context of the size of the population we all know we're trying to reach and all the partners. Um, next slide, please. So clearly, we've just gone through the plan on a page in, in some detail, but, but when we're going out to speak to our communities about what this strategy means for them, clearly we need to we need to do so in chunks um, in, in language that they'll understand and 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 topics that they want to talk about. So clearly working with a number of partners um, who kind of steered us into the fact that maybe we should launch the strategy, looking at the first thousand days of life and what um, what people's hopes and, and dreams are for the next generation of people growing up in South Yorkshire. So that was very much the starting point. Um, and then my good friend Kathy here came up with a wonderful idea of a movement. So. So, so if we move on to the next slide, please. So, Kathy, just to, just to hand over to you. Um, I think what we felt was was that to share the strategy with as widely as possible, that we had to link it to a bit of a campaign that that was genuinely engaging. And in the December meeting, we did talk about actually developing some kind of creative toolkit or some kind of campaign. And following some discussion with Stephen and, the, and, and Oliver as the mayor, we decided to link that campaign to the idea of our future South Yorkshire. And a big question, what South Yorkshire, what kind of South Yorkshire do you want the next generation to grow up in? Um, so we wanted to make sure that there was broad involvement in that campaign. Um, and so we decided we would issue in this week and in advance of this week, a call to action. And the call to action is, is contained in the animation, which we're just going to click on now. What South Yorkshire do we want the next generation to grow up in? We want a South Yorkshire where children and young people have the best start in life, with a focus on development in early years so that every child in South Yorkshire is school ready. We want a South Yorkshire where the next generation live longer and healthier lives. We want a South Yorkshire where the next generation live in safe, strong and vibrant communities that are well connected. We want a South Yorkshire where the next generation are equipped with the skills and resources they need to thrive. Help us to shape our future South Yorkshire. What does our future for the next generation in South Yorkshire look like to you? So we, we put together a creative toolkit and what we wanted to do was to make sure that 
it, the, the video wasn't just us telling people what we thought the future of South Yorkshire looked like, but an invitation to them to tell us what they felt the future of South Yorkshire looked like. Um, so, you know, we wrote an invitation from the mayor um, to, for people to get involved. Um, we also asked people to, to hold an event or to have an activity in their organisation or in, in their community that would ask that question or encourage people to explore that question. And we wanted to do that in a really ordinary way. So we just put together some options as to how people could do that. You know, the <coughs> options were really straightforward. To everything from tea and talk to Gav Gavin's work, One Workforce webinar, you know, to coffee and chat, you know, to children in school colouring in a map of South Yorkshire and saying what a healthier, happier South Yorkshire looked like for them. Um, so it was very much, it was non-prescriptive, it was very much an open invitation and it was adaptive so that anybody, if they had their own idea, they could deliver it in their own, in their own area. It was very much a tester. Um, it took a little while to pull it together and to, to share it with, with our networks. Um, so, you know, there is definitely a lot here that we could improve on going forward, but it is, I suppose, a useful model. Um, Andy and the team and the NHS had a major challenge to take some of these ideas and turn them into resources as well. And the next slide gives you a flavour of some of the resources that we've created. Um, it includes the easy read version of the strategy, but it also includes this animation. You know, there's, there's a workshop structure that people um, did as well. And then we also included a letter to our primary and secondary schools, again, from Oliver, um, inviting them to be involved, um, which was shared, for example, in Barnsley through our Barnsley Schools Alliance. Um, and then there was a web page um, that had a plain text version that could allow us to translate that, the strategy, into 54 different languages. And we also engaged our senior politicians because we launched the strategy in, in each of the four districts and had it signed off by their councils um, in, in this week as well. So it's just the beginning of an idea, really. But I think what's interesting is, you know, the outcomes of the first of this test. And secondly, the fact that we can actually use that question and that hashtag for a much longer campaign and exploration over the life of the strategy. And it becomes part of our engagement and involvement plan as well. Um, there's still an awful lot to do, I think, in terms of co-producing and really involving communities in this work. Um, and that might be something that we want to think about. Do we need a group actually taking a look at that, how we might do that differently and in a radical way? Um, but I'll hand you back to Andy. Thank you. So um, so just a few ways that how it has played out this week. So next slide, please. So um, I kind of broke the golden rule of communications this week of sending some senior leaders to meet small children. Uh, which, so when Oliver was a few minutes late, I was beginning to wonder whether I'd made a serious mistake. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, so thank you to uh, Oliver and Piers and, and the others there, Richard, um, for going along and spending time with some children and, and meeting parents and talking to staff about about what this strategy will mean to them. Children. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so thank you for that. Uh, next slide, please. So, so we've obviously we, we launched this on Tuesday ahead of this meeting because we recognised obviously the, the time scales in between industrial election and pre-election periods, which we we all know about. Um, so actually, this is this has gone out far and wide. Um, the toolkit itself has been downloaded more than a hundred times. Uh, the hashtags reach more than twenty-five thousand people, um, and I know personally that at least five hundred people have taken part in events about. Um, about the conversations that we've asked people to have. So obviously there's a, there's a few comments, including some people from in the room and online. Um, I can see Sheena, who's online and was posting about it earlier this week. So, so it has had some reach into our communities. Um, next slide, please. And, and like I said, there have been discussions taking place. So I know Gavin joined the BCSE Alliance, Will chaired the, uh, joined the Children and Young People's uh, Alliance. Um, I joined the Cancer Alliance where they had a really interesting conversation about not only what it means to cancer, but equally the Cancer Alliance people said, well, one of the things that they wanted to tackle was loneliness and, and how loneliness had a big impact on people's health and well-being as well. Um, so next slide, please. So lots and lots of comments, and I know that's quite hard to read from here, but it should be in your pack. But 
but really people what they were saying they wanted for the next generation of people growing up in South Yorkshire access to sporting facilities quality all of the things that came out in the strategy really came out in the discussions about what people wanted um, at South Yorkshire working representative of our population and all of those things mm. um, and then next slide please And then again, some, some comments from a conversation that took place in Barnsley um, about people, um, what their hopes are, safe, sp safe spaces, green spaces, all of the things that, that you would expect. But really, people really thought about it and, and were actively taking part in these, these discussions. Um, next slide, please. So, so hopefully that will be ongoing because we've sent out the toolkit to lots of different organisations and, and as they meet over the coming weeks and months, perhaps they'll, they'll have those same conversations that we've had in, in events that coincided with the launch week, so to speak. So the VCSE Alliance were meeting this week and that's why we had the conversation there. But hopefully others in organisations and community groups will continue to have that. Um, and that, that should take place given the number of organisations that have downloaded the toolkit from our, our website. So, so a positive start and hopefully we'll start to embed it much more. Thank you. I'm genuinely supposed to start. It's never easy to get like hacky fans going. Yeah. The whole point is that we have to keep on persevering with that. Yep. Really crunch the time. Is there anybody who has a burning desire to agreement with that? Okay. In which case, um, can we move on to item number six, please, for the procedure? Thanks, Oliver. I'm, I'm really conscious of time. Are you okay if we Yeah, please do. I think it's really important. Okay, thank you. Okay, so, yeah. I don't want to take the paper as read. Yeah, so, no, we can do it, absolutely. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Christine Joy, I'm the Chief People Officer at the Integrated Care Board. And um, we were really keen and pleased to be able to get this paper on the agenda today because we are making a joint commitment around anti-racism. We're, we're making a joint commitment around tackling systemic discrimination with a focus on anti-racism. But we'd really like to be able to proceed at pace around the anti-racism agenda. So this paper is really here to get some commitment from colleagues in the room as to well, how are we going to take that forward. So um, we know that racism is a systemic issue. We know that from the data. We know that from um, co uh, people in our population suffer much greater health inequality as a result of race. But uh, intersectionality is, is, a big, mm. is a big piece here. You know, we cannot one-dimensionalise our population. Um, so it's really important that we focus on that. So it's not just the data. It's about our population and their multifaceted people. So um, what we'd like to do in terms of taking forward the, um, the bold ambition, um, bold ambitions and joint commitments that we've set out in the paper, we've, we've set out um, some proposed actions. So first of all, in determining this paper, this was not something that I did. I think that's important for us all as an integrated care partnership. So this is, is come from speaking to colleagues who and, and other people with lived experience. So this is something that has been developed with support from those. And I think that's really important as part of this paper. And obviously, we've talked about how we co-produce already. And I think this is absolutely fundamental, is that we co-produce how we step forward into this space as a partnership. So I'm asking us in step one is to listen and to be humble and to acknowledge that we do not have the answers and recognise that we need to work with people and population and those people with lived experience about how we make this commitment a reality. We've already set out our intention and we know from feedback um, that we spend too long describing our intention. We describe them in charters and various other things. My suggestion to us is we do not spend any more time describing our intention. I think we've made it very plain. So we should therefore proceed into understanding what, how do we make that a reality? So the first step, therefore, we're proposing is how we can have a conversation. It's very much in the spirit of how we've launched our entire strategy, how we could maybe have a conversation and a listening event, which we have an open invitation, not only to leaders within the organ, mm -hmm. because it's really important that we accept our power, mm -hmm. our privilege and our leadership roles in this, mm -hmm. but also to invite colleagues 
who work across South Yorkshire and um, in this space and, and who've been working in race equity for years and years and years. And we need to involve those people in helping us understand how we how we uh, take this approach forward. So we're proposing a listening um, event. Um, we, in terms of the comment made by Fran earlier, I hope you can see in here that we are saying this is not a one time thing because we also do know that this conversation has been had many times. Um, and, I, and I think it's really important that we set this up in the spirit of listen, learn, act, feedback, close that feedback loop. So, and I think, Fran, we will have to be making that exact same commitment in this space. So we'll fully support that. Uh, there is a proposed outline for the event in a G, which is absolutely fine for anybody, please, to, to comment on. We need to develop something that we think will work for us. So I'm really happy to take comments around that. And if anybody's got some ideas of people that we can get to speak in that event, to can put in the appropriate challenge, stimulate the discussion, I'd be very grateful to receive those. Um, what, we, what we're suggesting is we have that event, we then take the information that we get from that event, and then we create a co-production group um, with, with people with lived experience that can help us set out our plan. So we can't just tackle this. It's not a one-time thing. We need a plan. We need to be able to commit to resources to deliver that plan. Um, and then we need to be able to measure whether we're making any impact, and then we need to be able to feed that back. So we keep that feedback loop going. And step three is really about us as an integrated care partnership, having accountability and demonstrating that. So as a, a proposal for in our future meetings, it needs to be evident uh, and continually addressed. Um, and we need to have that impact measure so that we understand what's working, what isn't working, how do we change what we're doing in a very agile way. And I think in line with our overall approach. So my recommendation is, and what I'm asking of, of ourselves today really, is are you supportive of the proposed approach? Please provide comment, active support and allyship for this, um, taking this work forward. Please do attend and be actively um, participants in any events that we propose. And understand that this will require resources from us all. So somehow we go, once we understand what the plan's looking like and we can understand what the resources, therefore, we need, we need to then have a serious conversation about how are we going to resource this work so that we can proceed with confidence. So I'll, I'll pause. That's absolutely encouraging to come to the end. Um, Rachel as well. Sorry. Hello. You want to come in? Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. I'm so sorry the sound keeps cutting out. Um Christine, I just want to say uh the way that you framed this and some of the some of the elements of it are really welcome. Um, you know, the the, it's about it's about kind of moving not just to sort of talking about it but to actually doing something which is is great and also the element of accountability in the areas it's the thing that's going to make the difference if the accountability is owned and is it's actually got that the teeth to make things happen and in order to do that we do need to let go and and to kind of you know actually sort of work together on that and I think there's some really well progressed conversations and plans um, around the Sheffield Race Equality Commission um, work and um, they're moving now to develop a legacy body which I know health partners are really key in that and, and it's working as a sort of partnership across anchor organisations in Sheffield. That's been managed through the Sheffield Partnership Board and, and I think being able to connect in where people have already had the conversation, like people have have offered a lot of insight. People from um, racialised communities have offered a lot of insight. So we need to listen to what's already been said as well, don't we? We need to kind of take that as as a starting point for this. And so where there has been a lot of work done, we need to kind of move even faster to to that action stage. So I think there are things that could be embedded. Um, I'm afraid we've lost the screen. So if anybody else has got their hand up on screen, then you might need to just let me know. Um, so I feel like it's like sort of shouting out or something, but um, can I just come to Greg and then? 
Thanks, I'll be really quick, Christine. I thought that was really, really good. I agree with Helen on the, the framing of it completely. Um, and, uh, as well as systemic, it's structural and mm -hmm. power kind of inherent structural issues and the power balances and very white broad and all of that kind of stuff. They bring that out uh, and address, obviously. Um, the, uh, I'm not of the view that this is going to be an issue solved by a big plan. Um, this is something about just accepting this stuff in your heart and be willing to be called out and get it wrong, which we will frequently, and Shahida does with me frequently. Um, so, uh, and, and, and Helen's made the point on race, and I'm on here again, and obviously not just race, we're starting with race, but the disability, yeah, you know, I can go on for a long time, but, but it's got to get beyond just race. Yeah, thank you. Uh, apologies, I haven't got the paper, so I'll make some oh. questions. Oh. Okay. Um, I really applaud what you said. I think the language that you used was completely appropriate. And I think we should be really pleased that we're taking an anti racist approach. Just a couple of co uh, observations, really. I think in the plan, it, it, it made me reference Sheffield. And I wouldn't want people across mm. from South Yorkshire to think that the rest of us are uh, trying to develop anti racist initiatives. Mm. So I think that really does need to be we've got Dolly from our fence, mm. from Doncaster. Mm. And I totally see why you're doing that. We'll call them courageous conversations or whatever you want to call them. But I think we've got to realise the trauma, because racism is trauma. Mm. And for people to have to relive that trauma is incredibly difficult. Um, and I just wonder if what's it all we're actually going to put in for people to do that, because it is. You know, I personally avoid conversations like that because I've tried to leave it in the past. And I think that's true for an awful lot of people of colour. Um, and I think picking up what Greg said, it's the small things and those, and I hate microaggression isn't the word, it's those aggressions that people probably aren't aware of that make all the difference. So offer really people to get involved and help and shape and support. And obviously not just from my quality portfolio, but obviously personal experience. Mm. And I'm sure I'm probably going to say something as well on that. Dolly, can I bring you in please? Um, thank you very much, um, Oliver and um, Rachel. Um, everyone, everything that we've said is very, very good. The only thing I want to add to it again is our presentation and the engagement process. With things like race, we know it's very sensitive. Some people have um, felt disappointed. Some people have been a victim of um, racial discrimination. So these um, groups that we're going to work on, the working group, if we can be very intentional about it and strategic to make sure that whoever is cheering us, leading it to somebody of um, 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 maybe of, of color or, you know, mm. because you want to identify with the people, you want the real um, um, life experiences so that we take a seat back, do you understand, and then let them deliver and say and be free. Because there's always these things about, um, like I said before, um, what's this all about? But to empower people now, to, to kind of the allyship and um, a reverse kind of, you know, what the kind of things we do with reverse mentoring. So let them take the lead and then we sit back to find that, okay, now how do we really engage? What are the changes? Because people are going to say, what's this all about? We've done it before. What are the changes you really want us to implement? So it's about put, putting people in that seat. Let's take the seat back and gather genuine intelligence to know how we can work and make the changes. Like um, Rachel is saying, we have the Inclusion and Fairness Forum in Doncaster, and we do things mm -hmm. like that. We kind of empower people to come forward with their lived experiences, and then we take the intelligence and work on it. But it's the putting them in that seat of power to ensure that, okay, this is all about you. You know, um, you've, you've been through it, you know about it. How do you want us to embed all these things that you're saying and see the changes? Thank you, Valerie. You're welcome. Christine, Christine, do you want to come back up? No, just really welcome the comments. We, in terms of the support around the listening, it will take a lot of thought and preparation around that. So fully yeah. here, and thank you, Dolly, for that. I 
it's just it starts to be just the same. Um, not just being insulated from the work that's gone to both the, the paper, the, the strategy, etc. So it's got in there. I, I guess I'd just sort of reiterate that that final point which I've made a number of times on the strategy, which is none of this is easy. Completely accept that this is a really hard thing that we're trying to do. We're trying to shift um, decades of um, Health inequality and the things that contribute to those health inequalities across our community of 1.4 million people. So I, I think, you know, we maybe just need to occasionally to sort of reflect on the thing that we're taking on here, which is a massive challenge. Um, and give ourselves a little pat on the back for how far we've come in such a short space of time because um, I do think we've come a long way and I do think we're doing something incredibly difficult and ambitious but doing it in the right way uh, collectively across all these different systems. So thank you for all the effort and the, um, and the way in which. People are approaching that challenge because I think it's been a joy to watch actually, and then um, and long may it continue. So, the next meeting is on the 23rd of May, and um, so we'll see you all then. And um, thank you for your contributions. Thank you for your Okay.